Hey guys, this is Mikro. I was going to do a build guide on the build I've been playing primarily in Fresh Start, which is Warhammer Greatsword, or Greatsword Warhammer. Usually you're out with the Greatsword and the Warhammer is more of a secondary, and then I was going to go through what gear I'm running, what I'm trying to build for, and then do a couple alternatives for builds, as well as uh, a small demo, but not much of one, since the PvP on the Fresh Start server I'm on is not as competitive. But this build's felt really good in OPR, it's been pretty consistently top 3 to 5 as a tank, which is more rare, and usually the comments from people that are against me are along the lines of like, how are you still alive, how much, how are you doing so much damage, uh, but it's, it's basically the I'd say an updated version of the heavy bruiser that actually is able to exist on the point, as how I describe this the most. The problem with Great Axe Warhammer that you had before is you're basically just reliant off your lifesteal and the people turned on you. Uh, you're not really able to survive in current meta because you don't have cleanse for that often. And this helps because it gets rid of some of your cleanses, or gets rid of some of your debuffs naturally at the tree, as well as abilities that cleanse roots as well as abilities that can block stuns. Uh, there's just a lot going on with this that is able to make it more survivable, and I'm going to walk through the skill tree first. Or, no, I'll walk through the, the gear first, and then I'll, I'll go through the skill tree and then do somewhat of a demo here. So the way I'm building this right now is a refreshing ward-based tank build. It's pretty standard for most classes. It's a more popular last meta than it is in this meta, but I think it works well for this. So I'm basically looking to get Refreshing Ward in every piece of gear I can except for Amulet because Amulet gear pieces are just generally too good. There's not really a reason to give up health slash protection or stamina recovery or uh, even the, the one that cleanses you when you get below 50% health. Like that would be also a good one. But there's not much of a reason to run more, run more Refreshing Ward for that in my opinion. On, on the ring, I think you have a lot of options. I think... The safest bet is doing like a hardy slash invigorated punishment. I think you could do a, you could drop the hardy and you can go invigorated punishment slash slash leeching if you wanted to for like an ideal ring. But in general, there's not a lot that you can get wrong with the ring. The only thing that's bad, well, right now I'm running smooth bone, and the bad thing about that is the crit uh, damage modifier for these weapons is very very low at 1.2 and 1.25. So crits won't do more damage in PvP. So there's not much of a reason to run keen with this build, so that is noteworthy. And then uh, Earring Teardrop is very, very good. There, There's probably other ones that you could get if you have preference, like if you don't want regenerating, but I think regenerating is a solid ability and Refreshing Ward on Earring, I don't see a, a reason not to really run it. You could like, I guess, run Mana Pots if you wanted to for the extra health, but it seems a little bit uh, wasteful at the moment. I think if that thing went through on PTR where people automatically pop pots when they get below HP and that works with mana pots if you get below half HP that'd be interesting but the ability is too long for the, the actual health to gain in my opinion so I, I would just go teardrop and keep it simple uh, you get this teardrop from going to blunderbuss or barnacles and black powder and you can get that really really easily you don't even have to do the whole dungeon like I had a group that was just going through like the first two areas before the alligator and then resetting uh, to farm expertise very fast, as well as uh, farming the the drops there. So that only took me like maybe an hour and a half to get through all 25 runs for a day, and got me to almost max gear score on all my weapons. So yeah, that was also a pretty good use of time, but that's where you get teardrop. Uh, transference is what I'm running on Greatsword. I think you have options here in, in, in terms of like what you want to run, but I think this is very good. Uh, the Refreshing Ward is nice. I think there's other ways to build it where you maybe you wouldn't have Refreshing Ward. Um, but the Thwarting Strikes also is pretty constant with this build. Slowing Rupture is an underrated util that I think is solid. And I'll go through the combo and like why that is like so good. You get that weapon. If I alt tab here. You get this guy from... Fungal Step and Mulder Husk mostly. Uh, they're right next to each other, so there's no reason really to not farm these guys, and it's like at the little corner of Weavers. It's like only a level 35 mob, but it drops this, which is very good, and it also drops the Band of Damien Dust, which is probably the best mage ring that you can get. Uh, that is farmable. 
unless you want to like include the one that you can get from like fear void gauntlet player there's one that you can get from a uh, tempest that is keen uh void damage and like infected or something like that and that one's not bad either but i think this one is generally better and for lighter heavy mages this is obviously better because you have the hardy terror crash is what i've been running on hammer you get that from the siren's brute it's not a very hard farm if you have a group but if you don't have a group it's not really farmable there's also one that similar that drops from the leviathan that you can get i think this one of those two hammers is like very crucial the the thing about the little Leviathan is it doesn't have the one with the refreshing ward, but has refreshing, so you're not losing much there. I just uh, am a refreshing ward fan. And S S Sundering Shockwave is what you're really looking for on the hammer, because the rend is good util, and there's not really a reason to not have a hammer with that. So that's why I'm running those two weapons. I'm running vines right now. I could see this being run with other things, but I think vines is very, very solid, because you tend to group people up and stamp them out, so it's very easy to hit the vines after, and it's very hard for them to iframe that. And then bar is pretty standard. I would definitely get an amulet with slash protection early on if you need it, and then run some sort of split where you're heavily favored into slash, especially on a fresh start, because most people are just running great sword or great axe, and both those are slash damage. So I've, I'm shooting for like around 25 slash, around 5% general, uh, just to have something, but I've seen some people even drop that and go like even more slash and then around 10% elemental is good I have tier 4 gems in right now because we don't have a, a tier 5 arcana station on this server because we are very very slow But going into the skill tree and why this is so good uh, So I talked about a similar one in a video ago. I've updated it a bit the main combo I was going for in that video was I'd go into aggressive shift using the heavy attack and then I would go for a root and then I would pull people in and then I would switch to hammer and I'd stun them or you have the option to use calamity counter for the stun. I have dropped some of the perks with that. So like the obvious perk to drop, so I, I guess I can go through this in like the perk order that I would get uh, as well as like why I decided. So you use heavy attacks a lot in this build. So I've actually decided to go off this 90% one, which is also fairly constant in wars, uh, and go for the heavy attacks, but both should be good. Uh, Relentless Rush, so I should go through the perks I have on here. Calamity Counter uh, on armor, so this gives you stamina when you activate your your Calamity Counter. The reason why this is very good is usually when you use your, your block, people will find a way to either break your block or you'll find a way to get stammed out, and then you can use Calamity Counter to generate stam, block attacks, and then if you block three attacks, you do a knockback that puts people on their back, which, which is like similar to the effect of being like hit by a blast shot animation-wise. So basically, they, they can't do anything to you when this happens. So Calamity Counter is very strong if people are actually looking at you, which makes it desirable if you're on point. Uh, this perk is, I'd consider to be a must-have for this build. Uh, and Relentless Freedom is the other must-have perk I'd say that you, you want for this build. So this just cleanses all roots when you use that ability, so it's turned... This ability that I was using before from more of a combo tool to like uh, my get out of jail free card tool. And because I'm not using that as a combo tool and I'm using that to live more because I've I've built this as a pure tank. I, you could adapt this if you wanted to be more DPS and I think you could go aggressive shift and you could go for this like adaptive rush combo into pulling them in. And maybe not even running Calamity Counter but running something like Skyward Slash or Crosscut. That would be more offensive, that would be like a, a build that would be better for like a, a medium player with this setup. Which I still think is very solid. Like, Great Axe is a little bit stronger at that at that game. Uh, Great Sword is still very good though. So that's why I'm running Calamity Counter. Uh, and then I'm taking Critical Comeback now because I find this aggressive shift to actually be detrimental. Because you're in Path of Defiance a lot and with Guard Point, you don't really want to be getting out of Path of Defiance because the, the blocking incoming attacks perk will later on when I get to the, the stamina, but when I get down to Faultless Defender, that like synergizes very, very well if you're in this tree. So this combo is very, very good, but I don't think it outweighs the benefits of being able to spam heavy attacks and then generate your stamina, and while you're doing that, you're applying rend and you're uh, not going to take as much damage and be able to, to block. Uh, like you're not going to take as much stamp damage, you're going to be able to block attacks while doing damage, which makes it very good. 
So that's why I went Relentless Power there. And then uh, Step and Strike was something I didn't have before. I didn't realize that this effect, if you activate it, it gives you stamina when you do its hits, which is very, very good if people are on top of you, because the stamina regenerates your block and keeps you alive. So I went with that. And then uh, on this right part, Perfect Vigilance is solid. There's not much to not like about this. Before I had Wary Posture, I don't think it's a good anymore because this only applies off the first hit. So it's like the problem with the 250 con perk where if you get hit by a dot, I believe it procs it. And then you won't be able to reproc that easily. So it's it's it can be good situationally. Like say you're not in Defiance normally and you see a big attack. You see like a bunch of people coming at you and then you like pop like Calamity Counter and then you get this activated, then it could be good. But generally not ideal. Uh, so let's go back to that. So that's why I go into here. And then Jagger Counter is an ability that makes this very, very good because it charges your ults fast, because bleeds charge ults faster than other attacks, uh, typically. So that's why I'm running that. Unflinching Blade, uh, I think everyone that runs Great Sword runs this. You get grit on your attacks, which means you don't have to, on your heaviest, which means you don't have to hit that 300 strength, which I do not do for this build. Uh, arrow deflection, just good in general, because that will help proc Calamity Counter. It's good versus a lot of things. Not much of a drawback, but just increasing a little bit more stam damage. Faultless Defender, also good. Rowing Rupture, this is part of the combo, why it's so good. This ultimate, you, you get at this point. 15% uh, of the, the health back is what you're really looking for, so you're looking to juggle that block and damage style. And at this point, you have some options, you have some flex perks. Step and Strike, I believe I already talked about, this is very good. And then at this point, most of these are, are preference of what you want to do. The ones I prefer right now, I prefer Guarded Shift, because I think this makes it consistent to get in Defiant Stance. When you get in Defiant Stance, you take less damage. Like, it's a passive 15% uh, global fortify that cannot be stripped. So that's very solid, and it's also the reason why we're well, another reason why we don't like to do aggressive shift anymore, because you have this passive fifteen percent fortify, you have this passive twenty percent fortify, but this cooldown is a lot, uh, it makes it more inconsistent. So both those are a reason why path of defiance is very very good for tanking. Uh, at this point, blade holding's pretty solid. It's it seems like it's small, but this is like the why people run invigorated punishment on rings kind of small like it's it's significant i think usually you'll just have path of defiance up and one of these like empowers up maybe both but if you have this up this up and this up then that's three buffs so then i'm getting nine percent more damage which is almost as much as standing in an oblivion like it's at that scale so it's significant and then the last point i've been switching between these two i don't know which one's better uh, Swift Onslaught is... Oh, actually, this... Uh, coming back to this last point, uh, when you proc the critical comeback, which is fairly consistent, then this will count as two buffs, so then you're actually going to get the cap here, so that will be 12%. Um, when you... For the last slot, Swift Onslaught versus Critical Calamity, I think, is the big debate. A lot of these other perks seem like they're good. Adaptive Rush, you won't be able to actually really use this except for the heal. Uh, which the heal only maxes out five hits, and for me it hits about 1k per person, maybe 2k if you hit both people. So if you hit five people with that, that's 10k. You take 15% of that. You're healing for 1,500, which isn't bad. It's also the same amount as you're healing with this. I don't think it's like worth prioritizing. The the root you're no longer really able to get because you don't have this a regressive shift unless you go crazy with refreshing ward and you go relentless rush into relentless rush into relentless rush but usually when you go into path of onslaught you're trying to get out of this as quickly as you can and go into roaring rupture to get more fortify which this build inherently passive if you just take into account path of defiance and roaring rupture you're gonna have uh 24 plus 15 so almost 40 percent fortify on your own not including gems so you will be at fort cap pretty consistently with this build, which is like similar to Blunderbuss of why it's very preferable to run it as a point tank player and why this is probably a better heavy melee option than Great Axe at this point. 
Uh, personally, for this last perk, I've been going with Critical Onslaught, because this will cleanse roots, and then I'll be able to create more distance with this, and then uh, figure out, and it also helps me position a little bit better for the Roaring Rupture, because I don't have this root combo anymore, getting a little bit of haste to be able to position where I want to be to pull people in and do my combo. Feels good, because you don't want to dodge a lot with this build, but you want to dodge enough to get the step and strike off. So there's like a lot of perks you're juggling. You're trying to juggle the step and strike, which will give you more stamina every time you hit, also gives you an empower. You're trying to juggle this Undying Defiance, and you're trying to juggle this Faultless Defender. So it works out in a weird, like, you want to dodge, but only dodge like once for every three attacks. You want to block, but you don't want to block for too long. Or you just want to spam heavy attacks, which is like the easier way to play this. And then when you're blocking, which includes this Path of Defiance block that you get from Guard Point, then that's going to proc the 15% heal off everything, which basically makes it so that you can uh, 1v, I'd say 1v3 to 5 and live for about 30 seconds comfortably if you're doing everything right. So, yeah. So that's what I've been running. Calam Critical Calamity I could see being very good in a more intense war where there's a lot happening on the point because it will be a a more significant heal. The crit chance doesn't matter. I've already talked about how the crit modifier for Great Sword is complete doo doo. Uh, you're not going to get value off of that. And so, yeah. So that's what I've been running for that. Uh, some keybind preference there. Warhammer is a pretty standard tree. I think most people run this tree at this point. There's not too much to talk about if you played a, a Warhammer build. So, I'll just kind of skip over that quickly. It's the same build, or same tree as like a, a great axe, or yeah, great axe. So, let me try to pull some of these mobs and kind of go over. I don't know if I'll two tap everything. I hope I won't. I am running 250, 250 with this build right now. So, it will be. It will be like decent damage, but it won't be like insane damage. I think I am running this backwards at this point. I have not done this weapon XP farm in a while because there's better ones, but I figured it would be a good way to demo pulling a bunch of mobs and doing some of the things. So, main thing, so say I get rooted here, then I proc this, that's going to give me haste, I can speed up, and I can pull things in together, I can do this block, put a point with my mirror. And see how that puts everyone on their back? That's very, very good in a war situation. You could also have the option just to AoE stun people, which will put a rend on people, which is generally pretty good. And then I already have this, I already have my abilities back up because I'm stacking refreshing board, which is why it's nice. So that's like the base combo. You could combo that, you know, with your other Warhammer abilities. Uh, but the base idea is you have your, you kind of go in, you're doing your, your normal heavy attacks, and then you pop that relentless freedom, and then you kind of go from there. I can go get a couple more mobs and then try to do some of the other uh, options. So that time I did the the thing where if people hit you, you'll be able to knock them back. Of course, in a war, it's a little bit harder to activate that than it, than it is compared to PvE. This build is possible to run as a tank build. Uh, not super easy. Hopefully they won't die when I do my actual combo, but I know some of this probably will die. But I can actually get pulled now, and we'll end up over here somewhere. I'm totally running this wrong, and I am sorry for anyone that's done this farm before, because this is going to look awful, I just have not run this in a while. So if I get in the path of defiance, the, these blocks are applying rent when I put the guard up for a little bit. You can also do heavy attacks, which will also make it so that they can't damage me. And then I'm constantly healing to 15% lifesteal off of that, so that's a, a good aspect. And then I'll do one more run through over here, assuming these mobs have spawned. I believe you come down the right side over here, if I re remember correctly. You normally hit those guys at the range, but I don't have that. I would show OPR gameplay, but the way that this server's worked out with the fresh art, it's not going to be super competitive. I need to actually hit those guys. I am derping so hard right now. Don't want to get caught in there. I'm 
normally I would range attack those, but I don't have a ranged weapon, I don't have a range, so... It's gonna be a small pull for this one, but it'll be something. So if people are on you, you have the standard Warhammer shit. Uh, pulling people in into Warhammer also works nicely, so I pull people in, I stun them, and then we say, I do my combo, and then I root them, and then usually by at that point, they're dead. So that's like the main purpose of why you're doing that. Uh, there are a couple alternatives at the wait to, for the PvP, I think, to go away. So, I think one alternative for this, which is kind of interesting, I, I talked about in another video, I want to demo it. So this Trenchant Rend and this Plague Strike seem to inherently have a cooldown on them. So if I do this, you'll see the disease on there, but if I... And then if, let me find a different mob. If I do it again, there should be a cooldown on this. It's just, it's, I think it's a smaller cooldown, so it's like harder to actually test. Um, so it's not significant, but there is like a thing where you won't be able to like AoE hit, hit people with that disease. And then if you go to a, another weapon, you see how that rend only procs on one person. If I swap off it, swap back on. Then I get the rend again, swap off it, swap back on. Get that rend again. So you could put both those weapons on your greatsword potentially, and then just like... Uh, abuse that. The problem with that is that you're going to be losing your path of defiance pretty consistently, but you already do that when you swap to the Warhammer, so I think that's another way to build this, because you're constantly doing heavy attacks. When you do heavy attacks, that will apply to the disease, it will apply to the end. Uh, so that's a, another way to build this. I, I could see being very successful. And yeah, I don't know if I'd run this in a normal group, but in a, in a point oriented group, it is very, very strong. And, yeah, that is what I've been running on Fresh Start. That was educational for some of you guys. Uh, do you have other options for runes? Like, I don't think you have to do vines. You could do stone form. The, the one that p makes you puke your guts out next patch that inflicts disease is probably pretty good because that one seems like it's pretty good in general. But, yeah, you have options. Refreshing ward stacking feels good. Been doing well with this, and I'll see you guys later.